Let's talk about E tag. So E tag stands for identity tag, and it is a response header that represents a resource that is changed without the need to download. The value of an E tag is generally represented by a hashing function, such as MD5 or SHA1. E tags are part of the HTTP protocol. So it's not an AWS specific thing. It's just a broader concept of HTTP. E tags are used for revalidation for caching systems. So caching uh, services like CDNs and things like that definitely make use of E tags. So S3 objects have an E tag. If you query uh, using list objects, you will notice that there are E tags uh, as it is uh, uh, indicated right here in the uh, JSON output. E tags represent a hash of an object. E tags can represent whatever uh, the person wants them to be, but AWS has decided it represents the hash of the object or object's contents. It reflects changes only to the contents of an object, not its metadata. And we'll talk about metadata here in another slide. Uh, it may or may not uh, be an MD5 digest of the data object. It depends if it's encrypted or not, but for the most part, it's using MD5. Uh, E-tags represent a specific version of an object. As we will learn, uh, S3 allows you to have object versioning. E-tags are useful if you want to programmatically detect ch uh, content changes to S3 objects. That is the primary reason that I find E-tags useful. Um, and so we might come across a lab where we'll demonstrate that, but that's what I want you to take away from this. E-tags, it allows you to uh, see the changes to content without the need to download them. So there you go.